Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Test Flight in the Focke Wolf 190. And I'm picking up where we left off last time, except with a small difference. It is about 24 hours in the future here. I ran into some problems with the radio. I tried to get it up and running on the ground and get into some operation of it. Got really, really frustrated and just had to step away and, and take a break for a while. There's something about the radio on the ground where you can get it into certain situations where it just doesn't work and I don't think it's something specific to this module I think it's just something in DCS where you can just encounter some situations like either after you start moving on the ground or something just kind of uh, flags and yeah in this case I couldn't get it to work at all very frustrating not knowing if there was something wrong with my setup or if it just wasn't working it turns out the setup was correct I just uh, they just decided not to work so I'm going to wait until I get airborne to do that, and let's go ahead and pick back up with the engine warm-up. Okay, this has actually already happened. The engine has already warmed up since I've been sitting here. It happens really, really quickly. I'll read through this procedure, however. So, engine warm-up. With closed cooling flaps, run engine at about 1,000 to 1,200 RPM until engine oil entry temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius. And my RPM is at about 1,100, and... My oil temperature is right here. It's already up around 95 degrees Celsius. So we're way past that when it comes to warming up the engine. And then it says slowly increase towards 1800 RPM until coolant exit temperature has reached 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. My coolant temperature, again, nicely color coded there. The brown for oil, the, uh, the uh, lighter blue for the coolant. It's already up to around 90 degrees Celsius. So all that's already done. It happens very quickly and we'll go ahead and press on through. So the next section of the checklist is stopping the engine. I'm going to wait until I'm back down on the ground before getting to this, so I'll just skip ahead to taxi. And taxi and takeoff with fully opened cooling flaps, or what I would call cow flaps. Uh, the hand wheel for setting of the cooling flaps position is located in the cockpit above the lower front panel. So it's hidden, tucked away down here, underneath the main console, the main panel, and it's this... Let me see if no, that's about as best a good a view as I can get. But I'm going to rotate it. You see, right now I've got it full. Okay, that's full clockwise. Let me see what the effect was out there. Let me go to the external view and check out the flaps. Okay, so full clockwise opened up the cow flaps, which is what I wanted to do. Except for that one little oddball right there on the very right hand side. I wonder if that's. I wonder if that's intentional or not. It could be but it just seems odd that there's that one little flap that's not open. But anyway, okay, so that was full clockwise to open up, and I'm going to leave it there. I believe it's going to tell me to, uh, at some point, it's going to tell me to leave the flaps open and through taxi and takeoff. Okay, now, avoid power settings below 1,000 RPM. I'm going to maintain this, yeah, just like I am right now at about 1,100 through the taxi, and until I'm ready to take off, and that and keeps the taxi time short as as short as possible in order to prevent coolant losses by vaporization or evaporation or whatever and I'm not going to worry about that so much because I need to take my time to figure out what I'm doing here okay when taxiing first unlock the tail wheel otherwise it will be impossible to make turns okay so the tail wheel is going to be controlled by the stick I know that if I pull the stick back there's a little sweet spot right there where it kicks in and it locks the tail wheel but that's how you lock the tail wheel, and you have to be, um, well, well, we'll get to it once we start the taxi, but you have to be kind of moving forward and allow the tail wheel to center itself and then pull back, and or pull back and then allow the tail wheel to center, and it'll lock into place for you. Okay, only after releasing tail wheel, lock the brakes. Okay, I think that's only after releasing the tail wheel lock. The brakes may be operating for testing purposes left and right alternatively. Do not operate the brakes for too long. Now, this is one thing I've been puzzling over is I could have swore there was like a wheel chocks function in DCS. Maybe it was just for some completely different module, but yeah, right now I'm holding the brakes. If I release the brakes, I very, very slowly start to creep around to the left at uh, pretty much any uh, idle power setting. Very, very slowly, but it does happen. It's very, very, well, not annoying. I mean, I would, I would expect it to happen. But then again, I would expect to have wheel chocks installed right now and not have to hold the brakes. 
So if anybody knows if there is really a wheel chocks function in DCS, I couldn't find a key binding for it. Let me know. It, it would be helpful. And let's see, where was I? Uh -huh. Okay, don't operate the brakes for too long, although I can't help it. And in case the tail wheel does not, tail wheel does not lock or unlock, it should be tried to unlock by alternating brake application and simultaneous forward pushing of the flight stick. Okay, I don't think we'll have to worry about that, but okay, noted in case. Our lineup for takeoff. Roll straight ahead for a short distance to ensure the tail wheel is in the straight position. Okay, and the aircraft may have to be taxied below power settings of 1000 RPM for a short while in order to avoid tire damage through braking heat. Taxing has to be performed as to keep the usage of the brakes down to a minimum. Short braking impulses are better than continuous braking. And what it's getting at there is that uh, braking action in any type of brake, whether it's on your car or in an aircraft or whatever, it stops you by creating friction. It, well, it, it stops you by friction. That's what slows you down. But friction also generates a lot of heat. And in this case, if it gets too hot through excessive braking, then that could damage the brakes and it could get so hot that it, uh, it I've actually seen uh, tires deflate as a result of this, uh, after, uh, you know, especially after an aircraft lands. Okay, pre-flight check. Prior to takeoff, perform the following pre-flight check. Primary controls. Controls. Check the stick and rudder to ensure they operate without binding. Watch the control surfaces for a correct response. Okay, so lateral stick, a good aileron movement. Stick fore and aft, got good elevator movement. Okay, rudder left, rudder right. Okay, everything is just fine. Horizontal stabilizer trim indicator, zero degrees. Okay, I already got that previously, although I will tweak it just a bit. Okay, zero degrees. Okay, altitude indicator, altimeter set. Now, I meant to set this to the, to the field elevation or field elevation so that when I'm on the airfield it's showing me zero that QFE setting so I want to adjust it so that the needle just comes barely off the zero and then just tweak it back down I think it hits a stop if I go past that position I don't think it will physically go any further past but the altimeter setting will continue to go down and right now I'm about 10 10 Millibars, I think that is, and I think that's a little different than what the ATC calls in, but there is a conversion that you can do for that. I forget the exact equation or how you do the conversion, but okay, I've got about 10, yeah, 10, 10, 10, 9 millibars. Okay, desired heading set. Now, on my compass, okay, yeah, I can rotate it to a desired heading. In this case... I think the runway here is 0624. I could be mistaken. If not, it doesn't really matter. I can come back to that and adjust it when I'm on the runway if I wanted to, you know, say fly a runway heading and have that indication right there helping me uh, stay on the desired heading. So I'll leave it there for now and I might adjust that as we get into the mission. Artificial horizon uncaged. Okay, now my artificial horizon, okay, I've got, okay, I can rotate it. Okay, I think, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I think that's, it started in this position, so rotating all the way over clockwise to the stop. I believe that's going to uncage it. I'll be able to test that until here in just a minute, though. And all instrument readings in desired ranges. So, okay, checking, this will be fuel pressure. Again, color-coded, fuel instruments in yellow. Fuel pressure is within the two tick marks. That's good. Oil pressure within the tick marks. Okay, coolant temperature, oil temperature, these will come up once I start to take off and I believe what I'll end up doing is once I get airborne I'll adjust the radiator so that it's at 100 degrees Celsius and then a, a, a thermostat will automatically keep it to what I set the radiator to, which I want to set it to 100. Oil pressure will come up between the tick marks over here between one, what would that be? It looks like 110 and 130. That'll be the normal pre normal operating range. Okay, this gauge is my MW50 pressure for the... Uh, I have this water methanol uh, combination that gets injected or can get injected into the supercharger to give me an extra boost of power. If that is operating, it'll be... The pressure will be between these two tick marks. It's off now, so that's fine. 
Okay, one more check of my tanks. Okay, Warren and Hinton. Okay, full and full. I think I... I can't remember where I need to leave this. It doesn't matter. I'll leave it in the Hinton, the uh, aft tank for now. And oxygen instruments have still got good pressure and I can still see my the uh, little flow indicator uh, actuating. Okay, the rest of this stuff I think is already said about as good as it can get. Okay, everything else, that's really about it for instruments. I have my clock I could play around with if I wanted to. But, okay, so... Let's press on here, I'll set all switches and controls to desired positions. Okay, everything is exactly as it was called out in the checklist. I can't think of anything else that I really want to, at this point, adjust. And flaps, set for takeoff, pressed start position. So I come down here to my flaps. This is the button I push to get them into the takeoff position. And I can see, I have an indicator out here that tells me the position of the flaps. I can see the left flap uh, raising, actually. They start to fold out. And I can see the right flaps raising. Okay, I think they stop at about almost 10 degrees, apparently. Okay, it looks like about 12 degrees. Okay, so I've got good flaps. And I've also got these indicators out here for my landing gear. I can tell that the gear are fully down and locked because I have this red tab sticking up. And you can see, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit further you can see that the red portion of it stops right there where it enters the the airframe and that's the indication if you can see the entire red portion that's your indication that the gear are down and locked and you can see where the paint stops there I'll come around to the other ones yeah same on that one you can see it a little bit better in fact on this one yeah the red paint is fully visible therefore my gear is fully down my gear are fully down and locked and uh, incidentally, I had a chance to uh, look at the manual one more time over the break I took. And yeah, the gear are electrically operated, so it's an electric motor that raises and lowers the gear, which is actually very cool. The only hydraulic part of the gear is the brake system. That is hydraulic, but the gear itself is electrical, which is uh, really neat. Okay, so now we're to take off. And I've been going at this, I didn't start my timer this time for some reason, but I know I've been going for about 15 minutes, so I'm going to take a break right here, and we'll get this thing into the air and start checking out some more of the systems. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.